Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, June 18th, 2020, and we are closer and closer to 538 releasing their 2020 election model. As of today, they've released their national average and polling data, giving us a very general spread, very similar to what we see in the generic ballot. When you take a look at it, it allows you to just pretty much take your uh, pollster grades and decide which polls you would like to see. When you go up to A plus only, you see that Biden has a very strong and clear advantage over Donald Trump in one of the top pollsters, mainly Mon month university besides that they also offer us a national average since march of 2020 leading up into today as of today joe biden leads donald trump by 8.7 percent with adjusted numbers from 538 meaning that even if there is an inherent bias in the polling data it is adjusted for and plotted correctly on the graph which means that it is a very comfortable margin for vice president biden at this point not to mention that they've released their swing state polling data from uh you know up to july not july june 7th 17th 2020 i'm messing up the dates here uh but if you take a look it only increases in terms of a biden margin there are actually only two states out of all of these that show joe biden uh losing to donald trump and that is the state of iowa and the state of texas other than that Joe Biden has an actual clear lead over Donald Trump in a number of these states. So I think that this is actually very important to take a note of. 538 definitely takes into account the legitimacy of polls, and so does Real Clear Politics, but Real Clear Politics likes to not necessarily include a lot of the data, which is why they're lagging behind. For example, Georgia shows Biden ahead by 1% on 538, but they haven't added a poll since March of 2020 on Real Clear Politics, so Donald Trump's lead remains 7.5%. Now that we have these swing states, I really wish I waited to do that polling data uh, video, but it will likely update um, as we progress through the election cycle and we will 100 percent see new polls especially with uh, the expectation of biden announcing his vice presidential choice later on a lot of people are starting to poll who the democrats want to be vice president and the most recent poll shows kamala harris with a clear lead around 28 percent of democratic primary voters want her to be the vice presidential nominee then it goes down to around 15 percent for elizabeth warren 12 percent for amy klobuchar and then the rest are below that number so when we take a look at biden's lead in a number of these states we're actually going to go ahead and plot it on this state on this state map the yet another political map simulator yapms.com for those of you wondering i'm using a different color scheme just because i want to so we're going to go ahead and actually just plot these. Colorado was never really competitive for the uh, Republican Party. Colorado in this scenario is a safe state. I think that's uh, something that we can all pretty much agree that Colorado is going to go to Joe Biden. Whether you're a Trump supporter or not, Colorado really shouldn't be the target for Donald Trump. As much as many Republicans would like to see Colorado be regained as a conservative state um, or as it was in 2004, uh, but more so regain it as a swing state. Um, a lot is going to have to change fundamentally for the uh, Republican Party in terms of changing, actually, their candidates. Um, whether it's going to be a subtle change or a drastic change is up to the Republican Party themselves. But um, in terms of appealing to Colorado voters, they have just taken a very stark turn away from supporting the Republican Party on nationwide, local, whatever type of election. So I'm not surprised seeing Colorado actually plus 17 for Vice President Biden. I know it actually might be a little bit better for me to use the regular colors, but I've already stuck with it and I'm probably not going to change it for this video. I'll probably change it for the next one. So for the state of Maine, this one actually shows Joe Biden had by 13.5% statewide. Keep in mind, Hillary Clinton's margin here was horrible, um, to say the least. She won by, uh, you know, 3% despite Obama winning it by 20% four years ago or four years from 2016. So um, while Donald Trump is increasing based off the Obama uh, Romney margin from 2012 by around, you know, 6%, um, it still doesn't make up for the fact that he's losing in the state by 14% uh, statewide. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't necessarily see a main second district uh, poll. So uh, let me see. Uh, I'm polling averages, but we can see average based off. Do not have enough polls to display a chart. Okay. So that's just, I don't think that they're saying anything about the congressional districts. So New Mexico shows Biden ahead by 13.3% as well. That's enough to characterize that state as well as uh, likely. I'm actually just going to move in the characterization for the uh, congressional districts because that's what the uh, map uses in terms of coloration. So I just want that to be there because I know some people are going to be like, you forgot to fill in Maine. Um, so Maine's just going to be characterized as that. Virginia, 10.6%. I mean, you cannot... I literally... Do I have anything open? Um, 
let me see oh i got an email back on outlook i was like what okay um besides that uh virginia may let me just turn the volume down actually so it gets rid of that um virginia and colorado and new mexico these are all states that we pretty are pretty solid on understanding that joe biden will likely win them um it's going to be very difficult for donald trump to win back states that he has pretty much pushed away alienated and that hillary clinton carried in 2016 which means that in order for him to win here he would have to improve off his 2016 margin and it looks like he's not even going to improve in any single state based off his 2016 margins. In fact, a number of key Republican states are narrowing down, not competitive, but not a 30 point margin, more so 17, 18 percent in certain states. When we take a look at Michigan, it actually is very surprising. They're outrunning the national numbers. They did not do that in 2016. Um, so the state of Michigan actually moves into the likely column for the Democratic Party. Uh, pretty comfortable margin, if you ask me. We're talking about uh, a state that went to Donald Trump in 2016, that uh, defied all expectations and went to the Republican Party for the first time um, in almost three decades, and uh, by 11,000 votes went to Donald Trump. But now Joe Biden seems to be carrying it by 10.2% statewide. So that is actually very important to note. The national average is 9.2%, so I'm sure that's just narrowly decreased from yesterday. Uh, but Nevada, that's an eight-point margin. That is actually very substantial as well. Nevada was in play in 2016. It was in play in 2012. It was in play in 2008. It was in play in 2004. It was in play in 2000. Not so much now. And the reason why, number one, Donald Trump doesn't improve amongst Latino voters. He loses that small amount that voted for him in the past uh, and doesn't, again, it continues to decrease his base of support. While Donald Trump right now, he is the pretty much the only reason he's losing. He is single-handedly solidifying a death to his campaign. And that's just with his outspoken comments. And we've all seen it. The media will eat it up. Regardless of what he says, it doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, what he says. Anything he says that's... Um, I guess, doesn't unite the nation because we are in a very uh, tumultuous time and we do need a call for unity, especially from the um, the Oval Office. But if Donald Trump is coming out there and, um, you know, what I would say, his campaign is intentionally trying to divide the nation. They did the same thing in 2016. That's not to say the Democrats don't do it, too. But we're talking about Donald Trump here. You really should be, you know, actually, I think the issue a lot of the times with um focusing on a divisive campaign, that's exactly what the Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden uh, and Donald Trump campaigns did in 2016. That's the clear difference I see with the Biden campaign. A lot of it isn't necessarily built to divide. Um, you know, with Hillary Clinton's number of comments, um, you know, saying a basket of deplorables about half the country, a lot of comments like that do negatively reflect on your campaign and negatively reflect on what you believe those Americans to be. But when Joe Biden made that 10 to 15 percent comment, if you're labeling yourself as the 10 to 15 percent of Americans, you could very well be in that 85 to 90 percent. But if you are classifying yourself as that, that says a lot about you as a necessarily a person, not necessarily a much as as much as Joe Biden as a candidate, because I can guarantee it based off the political discussion that I've seen on my personal channel, I would say that some people do take it to a very extreme. They go to a point where they have death threats in the comment section under, you know, my election night videos. And I will say that's very negative. It's really bad to the overall political discussion. And it does make things extremely toxic uh, in terms of discussion in what's supposedly um, a discussion based system. So um, Joe Biden's campaign is built a lot about unification. I think that the Hillary Clinton campaign did a very good job at painting Donald Trump as a very negative figure, not only his campaign, not only her campaign, but countless other Democratic campaigns. And while the Biden campaign is very much trying to do that, um, we're not seeing the same type of uh, opposition to Republican support that we saw in 2016. When there was, um, you know, when the Republican came out on the stage in the DNC and he was booed and, uh, you know, a number of other Republican officials were not necessarily too comfortable endorsing Hillary Clinton. A lot of it was because they would have received backlash from both sides. Um, and now a number of Democrats are starting to embrace the idea of senators such as Mitt Romney and uh, former uh, Republican officials that served in the House of Representatives or in the Senate or as a governor, whatever it might be. They are starting to, you know, the Biden campaign actually is rolling out a Republicans for Biden campaign late August. So. That is probably going to be a big portion of uh, his, uh, not necessarily support, but more so his focus, uh, convincing those Republicans on the fence that aren't necessarily too supportive of President Trump that uh, voted for him in 2016 because Hillary Clinton was the only other option. Uh, and I think Biden is doing a very good job at winning over back a number of those voters that were just so much anti-Hillary that they voted for Donald Trump, but were still Democrats at heart. And we're seeing that rebuttal in the Rust Belt across every single state. New Hampshire is a 7.7 .7 margin. I can't say I'm surprised by any means, but what I am surprised is the following number. Florida, plus 6.9% in Florida. 
29 electoral votes. Donald Trump won it by around 2% in 2016. Uh, Bush won it both times. It was competitive in 2008, 2012, and it's not necessarily at heart a Republican state, but it has almost consistently voted to the right of the national popular vote. Well, now it looks like it might vote Sure, still to the right, but very narrowly. A 6.9% margin for Joe Biden after adjusted polling data has come in means that he's leading in this state. Donald Trump, uh, I believe, was leading by 1% on Election Day, ended up winning by around 2%. So even if he does increase based off the numbers that we have right now, it's still a Biden victory enough to characterize it as a likely state. So keep that in mind. Um, when you take a look at Minnesota, it's actually closer of a margin than Florida. And I think that's very important to note. Wisconsin is a 6.6% margin. Again, that's a very similar margin to what we saw in 2016, but a lot of these pollsters are taking into account what they did get wrong four years ago. In Pennsylvania, again, the entire Rust Belt flocking back to the Biden campaign, flocking back to the remnants of President Barack Obama. Yes, Hillary Clinton did offer a continuation of an Obama legacy, but party fatigue kicks in right after eight years. And I will say that, um, you know, Donald Trump, again, he may have won those voters over once, but that was a lot due to the fact that he did act very presidential in the final two weeks. They put a last minute effort that had to do with the fact that Hillary Clinton had not visited Wisconsin since June of 2016. Keep that in mind. She had not visited since June of 2016. So when you think about that, if Biden even visited, visits it once, that could very well make up for those 22,000 voters that flipped over to Donald Trump. And now he's leading by 6.6% statewide. He's leading in Pennsylvania by 5.3% statewide. He's leading in Michigan by 10.2% statewide. Those are the only three states that need to flip in 2020 for Biden to win. In Arizona, it's a four-point margin. That's enough to keep it in the lean characterization, but it is important to note, Arizona used to be a solid Republican state. 24-year-long win streak for the GOP. Could be a lot like those Rust Belt states and flip in this uh, surprising election. Colorado is plus 3% statewide. That is also surprising. Colorado did not vote for Obama in 2012. It voted for Trump in 2016 and was expected to go to Donald Trump in 2020. But now Joe Biden is the favorite. In Ohio, surprisingly, Joe Biden leads by 2.7%. This is a national bellwether state, almost always votes with the national uh, election winner, may not necessarily reflect the popular vote as it didn't in 2016, but has voted correctly with the winner for 60 plus years. So Ohio, if it does go to Biden, based off these numbers, they will be continuing the streak for another four years. In Georgia, surprisingly, Biden has a very narrow lead. I wouldn't necessarily... Um, you know, I'll actually consider it tilt just because of the fact that it is a 1% uh, margin. Um, usually I would consider 1%, exactly 1%, uh, a lean margin, but I'm going to put it in tilt because Georgia um, is a very uh, tricky state, and I'm surprised to see that, and I do think that it would... Um, it differentiate the fact that Georgia is not Ohio, it's not North Carolina, it's not Arizona. The margins in those states are a lot larger than a 1% margin in Georgia in comparison. So when we take a look at the states that go to Donald Trump, we have Iowa, we have Texas, but it's only a narrow margin. I mean, both of these states roughly voted for Trump by the same margin in 2016. Um, which means that if they do narrow down this much, we could see a drastic pull away from Donald Trump. Almost a 10-point margin in Iowa. In fact, Iowa was larger than Texas in terms of a margin. I know I always, I always say that, but it needs to be said. I mean, Texas, the solid GOP state, now within a percentage point for Joe Biden. Iowa, what was a solid GOP state in 2016, now within a percentage point of uh, Biden. Uh, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, all flips from 2016. The Biden campaign solidly holding on to Minnesota, Virginia, New Mexico, Colorado, Nevada, New Hampshire, Maine. Pretty much take any swing state from 2016, Biden's leading, except for Iowa and Texas. So that puts Donald Trump in a very bad predicament. When we fill in the rest of this map, which I'm not going to do because it's probably just going to waste time, but you can pretty much see how Joe Biden is the clear favorite to win the election. This is 350 electoral votes. This is literally exactly 350 electoral votes if this is the uh, map given to, um, and no, actually more than that because Ohio is blue. So in this scenario, based off the numbers we have right now, Biden is decimating Donald Trump. We're seeing the likes of a 2008 margin in this election if these numbers hold on election day. Bad news for President Trump. So I'm really happy that 538 released these numbers. I'm really happy that they're giving us the overall uh, national data. I'm going to probably refer to this one instead of RCP just because they do adjust it and they do give you the option of taking a look at A, B, C rated pollsters. So I'm probably going to use that. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. I'm going to be coming out later tonight with a subscriber decided election night. And then tomorrow I will be releasing the most likely states to flip to Donald Trump. 
spoiler alert, there aren't that many, but I will be ranking them based off uh, most likely to least likely to flip. But other than that, that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, make sure to comment down suggestions below. Again, suggestions are everything. I really like seeing what you guys want me to do. Uh, the video I did last night was actually a suggestion, so uh, make sure you go ahead and get those out. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and joining as a member on my channel. There should be a little subscribe button up on the screen right now with my little channel icon and also a video that you can watch. It's pretty much tailored to whatever your interests are on my channel. I have over, I have over a thousand videos, so you probably can go ahead and see those uh, if you want. And yeah, thank you all for watching this video and I will see you all later today.